So now let's look at an example involving forces with multiple objects. Let's say I have a rope pulling three boxes. Each box has mass m and they're being pulled with the force F equals 40 newtons. And I want to know what is the tension in each rope. So this is a tricky problem because it involves multiple objects, but I'm going to tell you right now that the secret to finding the tension in each rope, we can call it T1 and T2, is really by looking at the boxes individually. And here's what I mean by that. We can label these boxes A, B, and C. Let's draw free body diagrams for A, B, and C. So for mass A, I'm also going to ignore, like you know, we have mg going down and normal force going up. I'm going to ignore that for now since all the forces are in the x direction and we're looking for the tension, which is also in the x direction. You can include, you can include normal force and gravity if you want. I am not going to, and that's just because you know I'm experienced and you're not. Which, if you feel, you know, if you feel better, you know, including normal force and gravity, because you know it's in your safe zone, and you know you want to do the same thing every time. Go ahead. I'm just telling you right now that you don't have to for this specific problem because there's no y component forces, okay? So, what force is acting on box A? There's only one force, it's T1. The tension in rope one is gonna be pulling mass A forward. Now let's think about box B. Once again, with box B, yes, we can have a normal force, we can have a force of gravity, but what forces are causing it to move in the x direction? And if we think about the x direction, T2 is gonna be pulling on it to the right, so T2 minus the force pulling it to the left, which is the Newton's third law force of T1 causing it to go to the left. And you know those two forces, you know, you can think of them as you know Newton's third law pair of forces. And then we have box C. And once again for box C, we have a force to the right. This time, the force to the right is F that 40 newton force, and the force to the left is going to be T2 because that, once again, is a newton's third law pair force. So now we have our free body diagrams. We also want to draw a free body diagram for the entire system. And we think about what's going on with the system. We notice that T1 is going to cancel out with that negative T1, and T2 is going to cancel out with that negative T2 acting on mass C. And the reason that is the case is because those Newton third law pairs are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, they're gonna cancel each other out. The only force that doesn't get canceled out is F, that 40 Newton force. And if you don't believe me, let's write a free, I'm sorry, sum of forces equation, F net X of the system, which has all of the forces acting on all the crates. And actually we can do that just by looking at A, B, and C individually. And we can say what forces point to the right T1 plus T2 plus F. And then if we subtract the forces to the left, we subtract T1 from box B, and we subtract T2 from box C, and then we set that equal to what? Come on, help me out here. Yes, that's right, MA. But what's the mass? Because the mass that we're talking about, since we're talking about the system, is going to be the total mass of the system, mass A plus mass B plus mass C times the acceleration, and since we're talking about the x direction, and the acceleration for all three of these boxes is the same because they're all connected by the same rope, like this mass isn't speeding up more than that mass, they're all connected, they're all going to be moving together. So now let's simplify this expression. T1 is going to cancel out here, T2 is going to cancel out there, and what we're left with is just one force F equals M total. So that's gonna be mass of block A plus mass of block B plus mass of block C. I'm telling you right now, they all have the same force. I'm sorry, they all have the same mass. They all have the same mass M, whatever that happens to be, times the acceleration. And now if we think about what is the tension in each rope, we just canceled out all the tensions. That doesn't help us necessarily. What we can find from this equation is 
the acceleration. And here's how we can find it. So F is equal to 40, right? So 40 is equal to mass A plus mass B plus mass C. They all have the same mass M. That's going to be 3M times whatever the acceleration is. And we can solve for the acceleration. The acceleration is going to be 40 divided by 3m. That's not necessarily a nice number. But the cool thing is that we can find the acceleration for any mass m. m could be 5 kilograms, could be 10 kilograms, could be 100 kilograms. Whatever m happens to be, we have the acceleration right here. So we're going to keep our answer in terms of m for this problem. And now if we think about how do we find T1 and T2, the tension in each rope, we just drew F net X of the system, right? Now we need to do F net X of either mass A, mass B, or mass C. We can choose any of the three. I'm just going to choose mass A because it has the least forces touching it. You can choose whatever you want. We're going to get the same answer. So if I do F net comma X comma A for the net force acting on block A in the X direction, we're going to look back at the free body diagram. All the forces to the right, well actually there's only one force, it's T1, minus the forces to the left, which there are none. We're going to get here T1, all, which is the net force, is equal to the mass times acceleration. What mass? Because it's not 3m. This time the mass is going to be whatever the mass of block A is, because we're talking about net A, times that acceleration. And remember, we already found the acceleration. That was that 40 thirds m number from before. So now if we were to plug in, T1 is equal to mass ma, which is m, times the acceleration, 40 over 3m. And one thing we actually see here is that mass is going to cancel out, and we're left with a final answer of 40 thirds newtons. So that's the tension in T1. And now we need to find T2. There's two ways we can do it. Neither of them are fun. We can either do block B, which the net force is T2 minus T1, or block C, which the net force is F minus T2. You can use either one. I'll choose mass C this time. Sorry, mass B. Maybe I'll choose you next time. We have F net comma X comma B. You know, it's I, I have nothing against block B. Oh, I just chose B. Whoops. C. Sorry, sorry, block B. Didn't mean to do that to you. We have F net comma X comma C, and that's going to equal all the forces to the right, F, minus the forces to the left, T2, and we're going to set that equal to MA. What mass? Mass of block C, because that's the net force equation we're writing it for, times the acceleration. We know F is 40, so 40 minus T2 equals whatever that mass is, times acceleration, which we said was 40 divided by 3M. Once again, mass is going to cancel here, and we get 40 minus T2 is equal to 40 thirds, which means if we just use algebra, we add T2 to both sides and subtract 40 thirds from both sides, we get T2 is equal to 40 minus 40 thirds, and that's just going to be 80 thirds, which isn't a nice number, I know, but that's going to be the tension in each of our ropes, T1 and T2. And that's how you solve that problem. So again, the secret to answering questions for forces involving multiple objects is really looking at each object individually with a free body diagram and then finding the acceleration using the system, all three boxes or however many boxes you have combined. And that's the secret to multiple object forces. I hope this video you found helpful. If you have any questions about it, feel free to email me at danw.tutor at gmail.com. And I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.